Let's start with visual number one, a column chart that turns into a line chart. You know that situation where you have a column chart that just looks perfect, but then you choose a bigger time period and you end up with too many columns. Well, then you would be better off with a line chart, but you could also have the opposite problem. You choose a very small time frame, and then, well, that line chart doesn't look right and you would be better off with a column chart. Now, let me show you how it works. It all starts with a combo chart. Now, then we need two measures one for the column series and one for the line series. Now what we need to do first is calculate the inputs for our condition. Now in our case, we need to know the minimum date of the selected period, the maximum date of the selected period, and we need to calculate how many months that actually is. And that all happens over here in these first three variables. Now, and then we can build our if condition. And you see for the line series, it is exactly the same. The only difference is here the comparison operator. And of course, then we have to take those measures and put them on the corresponding drop zones here for the column and line y-axis. Now the core functionality is already there. If I go to my slicer and select a time period with 12 or fewer months, let me do that. Now you see when the column chart shows everything is fine, we have the y-axis values here on the left hand side, but as soon as the line shows, then the y-axis here on the left hand side disappears, or at least the values, and shows up here on the right hand side. And also the grid lines, well, they are kind of missing, and we only have it here on the right. So how can we fix that? Well, step number one is that we need to make sure that the maximum of the primary and secondary axis is in sync. And here you see, I use a max x function to go row by row over a summarized table that has the years and the months, then calculate the total sales value that is either returned by the column series or the line series. That measure we can use as the maximum for the y-axis as well as the maximum for the secondary y-axis. So let me go here to y-axis and here we have the maximum, click there on fx, and then here the field value is going to be that measure max. Now with that in place, we can do exactly the same for the secondary y-axis. Now it's not completely fixed just yet because there's another change that we need to do because the column series values don't show because the column series measure returns basically blank everywhere because we have more than 12 months. But what we can do is go back to the column series measure and instead of returning nothing blank, we return zero. And now you see, we have the y-axis values also showing, but it is not completely in sync with that secondary y-axis, so we need to make another change. Let's take the visual, let's go to formatting again, and then we go here to the secondary y-axis and make sure that we align the zeros. And that's it, that is the whole visual. So now if I change the time period to 12 or fewer months, then we see our columns again, and you see the y-axis values are still showing only there on the left-hand side. 